following lecture was produced by Glorianne Publishing, a nonprofit organization, and is one of hundreds of lectures freely available via download, podcasts, streaming radio, and transcription. These lectures range in topic and complexity in order to address the many needs of humanity. We invite you to browse our library of lectures, books, courses, and articles to find teachings that suit you. Through the support of donations, Glorian Publishing has published 40 books, hosts international retreats several times a year, offers free online courses, and many other valuable resources, available to anyone worldwide. All of this has been made possible by the financial support of listeners like you. Your donations make it possible for this free public service to reach thousands of people every day. To make a tax-deductible donation in any amount, even anonymously, visit GnosticTeachings.org. Now, with heartfelt wishes for the end of suffering for all creatures, we begin the lecture. May all beings be happy. Runes Ur is in Sikh. These runes are interrelated with the power of the Divine Mother, Kundalini. This is why we place them together. <coughs> Anyhow, it is uh, good to comprehend that the entire runic food arc emerges from the womb of the Divine Mother Kundalini. Because all the letters of the food arc relate to the word that emanates from the Ain Sof, which is precisely related with the Rune Ur. As you can see in the Futhark, or Runic Alphabet, the Rune Ur is the second after the Rune Fa. which symbolizes actually uh, the womb. According with symbolism, the womb, the aims of the absolute, is symbolized by a circle. When this uh, womb initiates the great cosmic day, the Maha Mambantara, it is obvious that that circle opens. So during the Maha Pralaya, <coughs> or great cosmic night, the rune is closed, nor open, as you see it there in the chart. Actually, according to the syllogisms or words structures, that hide uh, wisdom, 
you have to state between parentheses that the word syllogism is uh, similar to the word myth, which encloses something hidden that are only those that have spiritual vision can see it accordance with their level of being or the level of objective reasoning. So there are, there are many syllogisms. Obviously, the runes and close a lot of syllogisms within which we find a marvelous knowledge. The Aztec calendar as well it's a great structure of syllogism within which we find all of this wisdom that we are talking about. So, the rune Ur is taken as the origin of all these syllogisms due to the fact that it relates to the Ein Sof. And remember that the Ein Sof is the Alpha and the Omega. The beginning and the ending of the universe. This is why uh, when we talk about the Rune Ur, we have to talk about the mother space in which womb everything is gestated. The Rune Ur reminds us of Uranus, Uranus, which is precisely the first emanation of the unknowable. Remember that the Bible states that in the beginning, The son of Elohim, which is the ray of Okidanok, created Elohim, the heavens and the earth. Heavens is translated in Greek as Uranos, and in the Roman mythology as chaos and earth as uh, Gaia. So you find this heaven and earth or Uranus and Gaia in the beginning of the book of Genesis. And of course all of these emanate from Ur Anos, from the Ur. So, let us use our imagination <coughs> in order to understand this marvelous doctrine of the runes and all the myths or syllogisms within which we find the same wisdom. As you recall in Greek mythology, Uranus, heaven, and Gaia are the parents of Saturn, which in Greek mythology is Kronos. So Kronos is time. In esotericism, time is symbolized with the word Heropas. Heropas is a word mentioned by Gurdjieff, by the Master Samael, and many other Masters. Between parentheses, 
regard to a state. But what is written in the book of Gurdjieff tells from Belzebub to his grandson is something that is written in the Akashic records. And that anyone that penetrates into these Akashic records will learn. Many people think that all the writings of Gurdjieff were his invention, words, etc. But uh, it is not. This is why uh, we the Gnostics talk about certain topics <coughs> that were mentioned by him. And the Master Samael on Beor corrected many mistakes that uh, Gurdjieff committed in relation with that doctrine. This is very important to understand and to comprehend because any one of us, if meditates and penetrates into the Akashic records, can verify. And it's also written, as you see, I am mentioning to you, in mythology, Greek mythology. Any myth has to be interpreted, as we explain in many lectures, in seven levels. So let us now penetrate into a higher level, since we are penetrating into the absolute. Remember that the absolute is divided in three parts. The Ain, which is the abstract space, the nothingness. The Ain Sof, which is the Ur, the rune Ur, which is translated as the limitless. And the Ain Sof Or, which is Translated as the limitless light. So these three parts of the absolute are one within the circle, within the womb of the Divine Mother, Cosmic Mother. The principle of the Ain, the nothingness, Penetrates the Ain Sof, the mother, and places within it its seed. That seed within the womb is like the child within the womb of any woman. Using that similitude in order to comprehend about this. So the woman has within her womb the seed of the male. And that seed develops. That's why it is written by the Master Samael on the or that is the, that within the ains of exists a kind a kind of evolution that many gods but the Elohim do not know. It is like the fetus evolving within the womb of the mother. <coughs> this uh, womb, which is close, of course, is what we call the Mahapralaya, the rest. Because the Maha Mambantara, or Great Cosmic Day, is the activity of the Ur. We will say that when the child goes out of the womb, that is the Maha Mambantara. But when the child remains within the womb, is the Maha Pralaya. To understand about these forces of the Absolute. So, within the absolute, 
There exists a law that is called the auto ego crat. The way in which everything that exists within this space is sustained itself without, without any help of the outside universe. Because remember that what exists outside of the absolute is a universe. That is also called the megalocosmos. The huge cosmos. But during the Mahapralaya, the absolute is auto ego It means that the power of creation within itself is sustained by itself. That's why uh, within the third aspect, which is called the Ains of Or, which is also named the Solar Absolute. There exists a kind of creation that is immortal, that is sustained by the same force of the Father, Mother, Son. Ain and self and self or this uh, creation that exists in the third aspect of the absolute is called the proto cosmos, which is made by spiritual suns, S U N. It's called the planets of Christ because they are worlds that are immersed within the infinitude that sustains all. So during the aims of or the solar absolute, there exists two eternal laws that act as one in order to sustain the life within that world, within the abstract space. Those two laws are the laws of the Triyamatsikamno that we utter many times in different lectures. And the law of the Epta Paraparshinak. The first law is the law of three, the law of creation, Triyamatsikamno. And the law of seven is the Epta Paraparshinak, the law that organizes within the bosom of the Absolute. It is important to understand that all of us, within the depth of our being, we have our own particular individual Ein Sof as we said it in many lectures. And within that Ein Sof or atom of the abstract, absolute space exist three particles of this law of the Triamatsi Kamna, which in Christianity are named Father, Son and Holy Spirit. So in the depth of our being, we have these three primary forces that form with the aims of the four particles 
or what we will call the tetragrammaton, within the bosom of the absolute. And uh, these uh, particles act within that kind of life, within that uterus, within that seed, in order to sustain the life of the solar absolute, the ends of all those planets of Christ that exist within that abstract space when there you find absolute happiness within those uh, places or planets or we call it spiritual suns S-U-N spiritual suns you find elements which are related with self-realized beings. Individuals that attained the reali realization of their ends of in previous cosmic days. So the three primary forces manifest in them, in their, uh, in their activity and potentiality. The three primary forces, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, the three atoms within the Ain Sof, have all the infinite possibilities. And in order to develop those infinite possibilities, the megalocosmos exists, or the universe. Those individuals that attain the realization of their aims of return within the aims of or and help it in its life and sustenance. So, that's why it is stated that within the ends of ore, the solar absolute exists many suns. Because every sun is an ends of self-realized. So the atmosphere of the ends of or the solar absolute contains all of these self-realized monads or ends of that attain the crystallization of the three primary forces of the universe, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And I repeat, they uh, act as one and help the solar absolute in his activity and sustenance in the, the abstract space it's a kind of creation a kind of existence that is 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 with the abstract space. <coughs> so, all of those ends of that still do not have that type of development that we call objective reasoning there is a type of reasoning that is necessary in order to act accordingly with the reasoning or with the wisdom intelligence 
of the absolute. So those ain't softs that still do not have that, they have to acquire that. And that's why the great cosmic day, the womb of the Divine Mother opens and forms the Ur. And from it emerges the universe. which is called the I.O. Cosmos or the Megalo Cosmos. I.O. in relation with the E.A.O., the three primary forces, manifested. So, as we know, the Ain Sof projects in the universe a ray. That ray is the ray of Okidanok with the possibilities of developing in the universe the three primary forces and to attain the self realization of the Ain Sof. So within that ray of Okidanok are the three primary forces manifested that eventually will appear from the Ur into the protocosmos and then into the megalocosmos, the universe. In order to start acquiring that. The great cosmo creators, which are directly related with the absolute, with the solar absolute, because any cosmo creator is related with the solar absolute, has the power in his own level. There are many levels. And that's why there are many sizes of suns and planets. Many measures of that light that you see in the universe. Any one of them engenders the rune is within those rays That rune is, which is just a vertical line, represents our innermost, our spirit that becomes what the Bible calls the Ruach Elohim or the spirit of those Elohim which are cosmo creators in the universe. So understand now that each one of us has their own particular innermost that relates to the rune is As you see in the fourth arc, the rune is, is a number nine. So that's why this inner must has to work in accordance with the guidance of the cosmo creators in order for him to work with the waters. Remember that it's written that in the beginning the spirit of the Elohim was floating above the waters. 
This is what Genesis says. So this spirit of Elohim, Ruach Elohim, is the E, the I, the letter I of the rune Is. That is written with an S. Because that S is a symbol of the Divine Mother. The S is the rune Sikh, which is the lightning. Remember that everything emerges from the womb of the Divine Mother. And that's why uh, it is pretty significant that the, the number nine of the Runis relates to the ninth sphere in the tree of life. The world of Yesod. Where everything is gestated. Now, if you take the womb symbolized by the circle and place it to the left on top of the rune is, you make the number nine. In this way, you see how the is emerges from the womb, and that's why it's the number nine. And if you place the circle to the right of the rune is, and then you have the number 10, which is the symbol or the synthesis of E-O, father, mother. Because our own particular inner must emerges from the divine mother. And the very depth, the root of our spirit, our inner must, we find the womb, the divine mother. And that's why the Divine Mother is also represented as E-O. The androgynous luni solar which exists within each one of us. The inner must. So when you think in your inner must, not only think as male, but male-female. It's androgynous. Andros, men. Janika, woman. The female aspect is the Divine Mother. And that's why the rune is relates to the rune Sikh, which is the lining of the Kundalini. It's a marvelous relationship of our inner must with the Cosmo Creators. And the Divine Mother. Because in order for the Ein Sof, our own particular Ein Sof, to acquire the development of the three primary forces, needs a guidance. That guidance comes from the Cosmo Creators. And the Cosmo Creators are one with the Theomertmalogos. Theo Mert Malogos. Translated into English means the Word of God. That Word of God, which is the solar absolute, that emerges as a lightning as the rune Sikh, in all the rest of the cosmoses that are, you know are six. Because the Theomermalogos exists within the first one, which is the protocosmos. So below it exists six cosmoses. These six cosmoses are related with the six degrees of objective reasoning that any Ein Sof can acquire in order to have the right to penetrate into the protocosmos, into the 
teomeramalogos, or to fuse themselves with the teomeramalogos. That's precisely the goal of all of us in the depth of our spirit. To one day penetrate into the bosom of the teomeramalogos and to help it into its creation as the cosmo creators in this day and age are helping in his creation in this megalocosmos or universe. Now, let us go <coughs> into the previous Maha Mambantaras or cosmic days in order to understand the mystery of the Rune Ur. There is a period of time that is called the Shutboglitanical period of the universe. S H O O T Shutboglitanical. C H O O T B O G L Y O I T A N I C A L should boglitanical. This is also called the period of the God should litanical. The period of the God should Litanical or the period should bog litanical. In that period, any self realized aims of that were acquire the development of the three primary forces in themselves were automatically entering into the solar absolute in order to help, as we say, the Theomermalogos, the word of God in his creation. But there was a tragedy that happened that is written there in the Akashic records in the cosmos. During that period. In which certain individuals. Who acquire the development of the three primary forces in themselves. Were still having certain subjective elements. Negative elements. Within themselves. And <coughs> as that entered into the bosom of the solar absolute, being unaware of these subjective negative elements, which were very subtle, that are called sins of the soul, very subtle. They altered the atmosphere of the solar absolute. And other individuals that were perfect and pure within that atmosphere were infected by these negative aggregates of these other units or individuals that entered. And obviously, there was an alteration as a consequence in the megalocosmos, in the universe, in the structure in the universe that are formed by galaxies and solar systems. So then, of course, these uh, psychological aggregates, as you know, 
relate to time. That time that is not related with the slow absolute. That time is what is called chronos in Greek. Eropas, or the passing of time, or the flow of time. Was different. Because within the astral absolute exists the here and now, the eternal here and now. But out of that solar absolute exists the universe within which the time, the flow of time, the arrow pass, acts in different way, in different speed, we will say. Related, of course, with the universe. Those elements that entered within the abstract space belonged to the universe, not to the abstract space. Therefore, they altered the Theomermalogos. And for that consequence, it is written that the absolute was in the danger of losing its volume, disappearing from the abstract space because of the action of the Eropas, or Heropas, Kronos, time. And you see that is related also with the revolt that Kronos, Saturn, made when he castrated the heavens, Uranus. in Greek mythology in order to control the universe. If you see that from that point of view, you understand how Kronos, time, entered a time that doesn't belong to the absolute and altered all the mechanicity of the universe. And that is what is called the tragedy of the shoot bog litanical or the god shoot litanical. Then, of course, the universe, or we will say it, the eternal cosmic father that receives the name of A Elohim, had to alter the two laws, the three and the seven, the triamatsikano and the law of seven, the epta paraparshinok. And convert those laws no longer into auto egocrat, but trogo auto egocrat in order not to disappear from the, ins, uh, from the abstract space, the place of his existence within the absolute. And those individuals that were infected by the Eropas, by that subjective uh, element, were taken out from the atmosphere of the abstract space in order not to alter that. Obviously, all of those elements suffered the consequences. And that's why it is written that the Theomeramalogos was forced to create the present Mahamambantara. If you study this epoch in relation with karma, you will understand that 
karma also relates to time. Obviously, the effects of this was catastrophic. And that's why the solar absolute was forced to create. And every single solar system, a planet within which these beings could abide during their purged or purification. This planet is called the planet Purgatory. That exists within that region that is known in Sanskrit as Atala. It's a planet which is a paradise within which these beings live. And within which anyone that attain the self-realization of these three primary forces has forced it to stay, to go there before entering into the abstract space. So, that's the mystery of the rune Ur. The how the absolute being auto egocrat became trogo auto egocrat. In order to sustain itself, the flow of forces went out of it and returned into it before it was sustaining itself by itself, was auto egocrat. But when that law changed into Trogo auto egocrat, he swallowed the energy of the universe and returns again. That is the famous law of the cosmic common throw out to Egocrat that acts in all the cosmoses to swallow and to be swallowed. And this is uh, through that law is how the absolute sustains itself. The forces flow from the protocosmos down to the other cosmoses and creating an each cosmos through the law of three, the different unities. And as we explained in the previous lecture, we need to imitate the absolute and to withdraw his force within our particular individual microcosmos and to create the solar bodies because if we do not uh, do not do that then the three primary forces flow outside of us in order to create children and all of those elements that we know already through fornication that act through the animals we are the only creatures with three brains that have the three primary forces within ourselves that have the capacity to create if we return the force within us to the three primary forces. Of the universe. That's why when we cite the Bible, in the beginning, which is translated as Barashit, the first word that appears is Bar. And that means sun, which also reminds us the rune bar, which Bhagwa is, of course, Ra, the sun, the son of Esh, the fire, Barashit, created Elohim, says the Bible. 
Or in the beginning God created. It says in the beginning God created. But uh, according to syllogism, we can say in beginning Barashit created Elohim. In other words, the Theomermalogos, the solar absolute, created the gods, created Elohim. Which Elohim? The heaven, Uranus, and the earth, Gaia. Gaia. Because those are, according to Greek mythology, the first that appeared. The other aspect that appears after Uranus and Gaia is Eros, which is the light. It says, and the earth, Gaia, was without form and void. And darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the rune is, the spirit of the Elohim, moved upon the face of the waters. You see the sequence? From the rune Ur, thanks to the ray of creation, which is called Barashit, the Elohim emerged, which are the cosmo creators. And these cosmo creators are called the heaven and the earth. Now is something very significant that we have to study in this room Ur. In the book of Runes, Master Samael on the Or says in the chapter related with the rune Ur. Ur is the clock. And the word written is UHR. When you go into the dictionary, German dictionary, you discover that Ur means clock. Certainly, the German language derives directly from the Futhark and many other languages. Remember that the Futhark, the runes, are the root of all alphabets, the Greek alphabet, the Latin alphabet, the Hebrew alphabet, in which there find all the syllogisms, or mysteries that we are talking about. So, between the rune Ur, or the letters U and R, which means Ur, you find the H that symbolizes what I said in German, clock. So the H is a rune Hagal, as we talk many times. The rune Hagal, the H, is formed by an X, cut it by a horizontal or vertical line forming the star of six points. Which is also symbolized with the Aztec calendar. As you see there, the graphic of the Aztec calendar, you see very clear the circle, which is the womb, within which everything emanates in time. Now, Master Samael Omveor explains us that the six-pointed star has six points towards the outside and six points towards the inside. The six points towards the outside are masculine. The six points towards the inside are feminine. So the six-pointed star, as we explained in many lectures, has the two polarities. 
if you make the addition of six vertex and the six pointed outside, you find the twelve. The twelve signs of the zodiac. The twelve hours of Apollonius. The twelve planets that rotates around the sun. The twelve apostles. The twelve tribe of Israel. And all that mystery that emerges from the mysterious clock. Which is, of course, very clear in the Aztec calendar. That's why we place the Aztec calendar in the middle. To show you again how this marvelous stone has precisely all of this mystery. Related with the Ur, the clock. The 12 hours. The 12 hours. Or we will say it. The 12 Sephiroth. Remember that in the doctrine of Hanawak, Aztec wisdom, they mention 13 heavens. But the 13th is the Ain Saf. I mean the Ain, the nothingness. Because the universe... The Mahamambantara starts from the second aspect of the Ain Sof, which is the Ain Sof. I mean, the, the, the second aspect of the Absolute, which is the Ain Sof. And the Ain Sof, counting from the very bottom to the top, is the 12th Sephira. So from the 12th Sephira emerges the Ain Sof Or and the Tree of Life, the 10th Sephira, forming. The twelve heavens, through which every single Ain Sof has to pass through in order to acquire the realization of itself. Only those that, after many Mahamantaras, acquire the twelve, the realization of these twelve spheres or twelve. Sephiroth of 12 heavens gain the right to enter into the bosom of the Ain, the Father, the abstract, absolute space, the nothingness. In order to enter there, you have to work with the 12, with the clock. That's why Ur, clock, is that the manifestation, the cosmic day, to the 12 eons, thanks to the intelligence of the Ain, the father of all fatherhood. Remember that we are not talking about a being here, because it will be absurd to give an anthropomorphic form to the space. It's an intelligence beyond matter and energy, beyond the spirit. And this is how we have to understand it. So, there is another word that the Master Samael mentions also in the Book of Runes. He says, Ur is the clock, the time measurement, the Mahamambantara. And Ru is a repulse, the great pralaya. When you investigate in the dictionary the word Ru, but with the H at the end, in German means rest. That is the meaning of the word rest. 
or repose. So you see how the rune or encloses that mystery. The age in the middle of the word, of course, implies the activity of the gibor, the age. That in previous lecture we explained encloses. Encloses all of the runes. Or that contains all of the runes. If you understand that the rune Hagal relates to the number 12, you understand how it relates to the rune Ur, and how the rune Ur, and from it emerges all the Futhark, all the runes in order to create the universe. And that's why we see all of this within this syllogism. Mystery that only can be sung, can be saw, I mean, through spiritual vision. And when you are an initiate, because these syllogisms were left by initiates, with the White Brotherhood, in order for us to study it. It is marvelous how everything hides these mysteries and how we have to work with this mystery of uh, Rune Ur. If you take the 12 hours of the Mahaman Mantara, then you understand about the time of what we call the hero pass, how it acts in different times in the seven cosmoses. Within the absolute, there is no time, because everything is an eternal now. Now you understand how when certain elements entered into the solar atmosphere with elements that belong to the Heropas, to time, obviously infected the atmosphere and altered that which shouldn't be altered. And that's why uh, this is what is called the tragedy of the Shudbogli Tanical period. Of course, this is something that happens always in the universe. There is uh, related to the hero pass of time, the flow of time, two words that we need to learn. And it is, uh, there are the words, uh, Fulas Nitamnian. Fulas Ni Tamnian. F U L A S N I T A M N I A N. Fulas Nitamnian. Time. This Fulas Nitamnian is a time that endures the 12 hours in relation with the ray of creation, in relation with the Teomermalogos, that acts, of course, in different levels, but in relation with us. We will state that that Fulas uh, Tamnian element do not act 
or does not act in us. Because belongs to the absolute or the solar creation. There is another element which is called Itoclanos. I T O K L A N O Z. Itoclanos. Which is the period of time given accordance with the vital elements that we have in the three brains. That is an element that works in animals. While the element called Fulas Nitamnien does not belong to animals, but human beings. I'm sorry to tell you that we are not human beings, but animals. But that's the truth. The physical body of any human being is submitted to the fullest Nitanian element. Or period of time. Which is about 10 to 12, even further than 12, to 15 centuries of the span of time, of life. Any human being of any planet in the universe lives approximately at least 12 centuries related with this ur or clock, the time measurement. In the time of Lemuria, which was that continent that existed, that existed previous to the Atlantean continent, any human being lived at least 12 centuries physically. That's why when you read the Bible, you find that such and such fellow was living 900 years. 800, physically speaking, that was and is normal among human beings. But since humanity fell into animal generation, which is fornication, orgasm, spasm, the whole humanity fell into the Itoclanos principle and get off from the Fulas Nitamnian principle. The Itoclanos principle acts according to the law of karma. That is place according to the laws of karma. the superior beings that control life in any planet, is placed in our three brains. And in any brain of any animal. That the span of time that is allowed to live, when that vital element that in esotericism is called Bobin Caldenots. It's another word that also we had to write here. I don't know exactly how to write, but I will write it in my way. Bobin Caldenots. B O B I N K A L D E N O T S. Bobby Caldenats. Bobby Caldenats. Those are the principles of life 
that the laws of karma plays, or that the laws of life plays in the brain of any animal. So the bobbing called the nuts that we have in our three brains is the span of time that we are going to live. We, we save them, we live more physically. If we expand them stupidly, our life will shorten. So that's why we cannot say, oh, I'm going to live 60 or 70 years according to my Bobby Cullinans, because you can't prolong them if you know how. That's our playing our three brains. So these Bobby and Caldenads were placed in the time of Lemuria. So the Lemurians were living still a lot of time. It was the beginning of the fall. In the time of Atlantis, humanity lived 200, 300 years. In the Middle Ages, in this present Aryan race, humanity was living up accordingly 150 years as much. Now the span of life, of time, is shortened. If somebody lives 100 years, appears in the newspaper. Or well, now it doesn't appear in the newspaper, but in the website. Such a such fellow has hundred and something years. This is very rare. Usually, the Bobby Cardinals, the Itoclanos, is very short. You, we almost do not live. Have no life. That's why in this time, if we want to acquire the self-realization of our own particular <coughs> ends of, we have to create immediately. Those vehicles for the three primary forces, astral, mental, and causal bodies, at least. Very fast. Because you don't know you're going to live uh, 50 years. I had friends in the past that died at 40, 45. Then uh, God, I learned, I uh, knew about this knowledge. Well, in previous lives. So I started uh, being a teenager. So I dedicated my life to this knowledge in order to awake all of those possibilities within me. Because I knew that living into the Itoklanos principle, we don't have 100 years. In the past, in the Lemurian epoch, those individuals that, have, that live 900 or 1,000 years still falling into the animal generation, they had time to create the astral, mental, and causal bodies. Imagine, if you receive 1,000 years of physical life, you will have enough time in order to create all the bodies and in order to do many things internally. And that's why at that epoch, there were many creations of human beings in the time of Atlantis as well. But in this day and age, the Theomermalogos is doing the last effort in this Aryan race in order to create solar man. Solar man means related with the solar absolute, with the solar bodies that we allow them to have. The activity of the three primary forces in them in order to develop their objective reasoning. Because the reasoning that we have right now is subjective, animal. When you enter into the development of your objective reasoning, then you enter and understand and comprehend all of these mysteries. These syllogisms and all the wisdom of mythology. But the White Lodge is giving this free in order to show you there is something hidden there that you didn't see, but that you can study if you work with the rules given by the heralds of the dawn. So now you understand why it is written in the Bible in Genesis 
the day that you eat from that tree, if you eat that fruit, you will surely die. Die to the fullest Nitanian principle and enter into the Toklanos. The circle of life and death within the Zamzara. And uh, each one of us now, according to our own karma, we have certain amount of Bobby Caldenants. Master Samael on the or gave a lot of practices in order for us to increase the Bobby Caldenants with the exercises of rejuvenation and many other runes. And by practicing them, we develop. And uh, if we annihilate the whole ego and create the solar bodies, eventually we'll enter into the fullest Nitanian principle, within which all the masters of the White Lodge work, resurrected masters. That's why it is written that an inhabitant of Dinas, Sanat Kumara, came in the time of Lemuria, physically, to our planet Earth, and still exists with his physical body under the Fulas Niptanian principle. Can prolong, because you know, masters of that level can penetrate in another hero pass or flow of time, which are beyond the physical, uh, physical plane. But we, unfortunately, relate to the Itoklanos, the principle that controls the animal kingdom. And that's why the human beings, the masters that are under the Fulas Nitanian principle, call us intellectual animals. Because we don't know even when we are going to die. And sometimes we die accidentally. And sometimes we kill our body. Is that a sad situation? Related, of course, this with the Ur. Because the Divine Mother give us life. If we follow the spiritual principles of human beings, obviously the Divine Mother will give us eternal life. That is what is related with eternal life that we have to comprehend. When the, the whole universe enters into the Ru, the rest, the repose, the great pralaya, all of the twelve sephiroth entered into the womb of the Ain Sof. And within it live seven eternities. Because the same time that endures the Mahamamantara also endures the Mahapralaya. The cosmic night. <coughs> In relation with the uh, rune is, it is written. And uh, in the Testament of Wisdom, before the falls down came over this earth, those who survived the hurricane and the storm gave praise to the innermost, and to them appeared the heralds of the dawn. The heralds of the dawn are those messengers, of course, from the slower absolute, to which our own particular innermost belong. Which is the rune is. So every time that we concentrate in the rune is, we have to know that it's directly related to our innermost and to our Divine Mother. 
together, the forces. Let us now teach you the rune Ur, which is that rune related, of course, with the uterus, as you see. If you observe the graphic that we place there, the individual that is performing the rune Ur is performing or making the Ur with his arms and legs. So the rune Ur is lying down there. Because obviously the womb is in the area of the belly. Within we have the solar light. That's why when you are performing this rune, Master Samael explains, it says, place the arms as when you perform the rune fa. Straight to the sun. Then crunch your body in order to form the you with your body. That you will be, enough, of course, will not be uh, open up or down, but lateral. And in that way, towards the solar absolute. Because remember that the sun, the physical sun, is a physical body of one of those spiritual suns that shine in the abstract space. So imagine that you attract the light of the ends of or the solar absolute into your own particular individual ur, your own body. Which relates, of course, to your Divine Mother. And that's why it is written, Within my internal real being resides the Divine Light. The Divine Light is the, the light that eman emanates from the, the Ur, the Ein Sof. Ram Io is the mother of my being, which is the Rune Is, the innermost. Devi Kundalini, Ramio, help me. Ramio, assist me, illuminate me. When you are doing that, you are concentrated in your being. Because that illumination will go through your Ruach Elohim, through your inner being, to your own self. Divine Mother of mine, Isis of mine, thou hast the child Horus, my true being, in thy arms. That's Hesed. A true being, an innermost. I need to die within myself. We will say within my ego, we, we, I need to annihilate my ego, so that my essence might be lost in him, him, him. The essence, when we die psychologically in meditation, in annihilate the ego, the essence, the free essence, goes into the innermost. Remember that the innermost has two souls. Or two consciousness, the human and the divine. So that human is inside of us, or part of that human consciousness that we have to create and develop. So, with the esoteric work that we do, we develop that. So, by doing and performing this rune, is how we receive the strength directly. From the ends of, ends of or, into our own particular ray, Glorian, to the innermost, and it sends down to the ray of creation into our physicality. And this is how we receive assistance in our own particular work. That is the practice of the rune Ur. And the practice of the rune is that, as I told you, relates also to the Divine Mother and to our innermost. 
standing in an upright position, let us raise our arms in order to form a straight line with the whole body. After praying to and asking for help from our Divine Mother, we must sing the mantra Isis as follows. Isis. Prolong the sound of the two letters and divide the word in two syllables. Is, is. The pronunciation of the letter I is similar to that found in the word T. Afterward, afterward, the student must lay down with his relaxed body and fill with ecstasy, concentrate and meditate on the Divine Mother. When you are concentrating and meditating on your Divine Mother, and when you are doing this exercise of the rune is, you are remembering yourself. Remember that the Master Samael Onveor always tells us, Remember yourself. Don't forget yourself. But people think that the mind is a self, that the ego is a self. No. When he says, remember yourself, remember your being, in other words. Remember your inner most. Your inner spirit. And by remembering him, then you pray to your Divine Mother. Because she is the mother of your being. Your Divine Mother. It's a your because you are in that moment with your consciousness, attached to your being. You are close to him. You are, you are him, 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 him. And being him, you said, my divine mother, because she is the mother of your innermost. But if you are with your ego there, and you said, my divine mother, the divine mother is not the mother of your ego. Your lust, your pride, your envy, your laziness, your gluttony, and all of those different that we have in abundance, the Divine Mother is not the mother of it. The Divine Mother wants to destroy them. We created that with our mistakes. By utilizing the three primary forces in the Itoklanos way. Because the Itoklanos principle is a principle of animals. They fornicate. And they have all of these animal defects that we call anger, pride, jealousy. Observe any animal in different levels. But we, of course, have developed that tremendously because of the use of the Toklanos principle that we shouldn't. That's why it is many masters, many avatars came to teach us how to enter into the Full as need time near and principle that is normal among the inhabitants of other planets. Now you are you understand why the inhabitants of other planets when they arrive here, they came for instance uh, 500 years ago, and the same individual returned in the same ship 500 later and he's still with his physical body and find the souls that he found many centuries ago with another body committing the same mistakes. Behaving like animals. Those souls that w receive the knowledge, the doctrine from other masters. It's sad, the situation. That's why it is good uh, for those that reincarnate to remember their past lives in order not to fall in the same mistakes. Unfortunately, we do. Related with the rune Sikh. We find, for instance, uh, in 1 Kings chapter 19, 11 to the 13 verses of the Bible, <coughs> about Elias, the prophet, in which uh, he, of course, is being persecuted by Jezebel which represents the world. Those people that always persecute us who are walking with this knowledge and always accusing us of being in evil because we are going out of their norms, their morals, etc. Because we want to develop ourselves. He says, go forth 
and stand upon the mount before Yod He Bav He, Jehovah. And behold, Yod He Bav He, Jehovah passed by, and a great and strong wind rent the mountains and break in pieces the rocks before Yod Haba, but Yod Haba was not in the wind. When you go inside of you, into your own cave, which is your own mind, to be in contact with your own being, you discover that there is a sound of wind entering through your nose, which we talk about that, and that mixed with the blood that is in our chest. And from there enter into the stone of Yesod, the rock of Zion, the foundation. And that wind is related, of course, with our own particular inner must, our own particular spirit. Because spirit and wind in Hebrew has the same pronunciation, ruach. When you said ruach is wind, ruach is a spirit. So that wind, that spirit enters into your nose. And then you hear the sound when you are concentrating in meditation. But yod kaba, yod he vav he is not in the wind. Because the wind emerges. Or the spirit emerges from the Divine Mother, from the Glorian. For that, fire fecundates the mountains, the rocks of Yesod. That's why it's written, and after the wind, an earthquake. But this word earthquake in Hebrew means also noise. And after the wind, a noise. The word, the sound within you. But Jodhaba is not in, a, in the earthquake. And after the earthquake, a fire. Temptation is fire. After the motion of the wind in your body, which is called, the, wind, the, the motion is called, or the noise is called the earthquake, the motion of the forces inside of you, emerge the fire. That relates, of course, with that fire that is in our sexual organs. Remember that I stated Temptation is fire. That fire that emerges from the darkness. But Yod Haba was not in the fire. And after the fire, if you defeat temptation, and you transmute the sexual energy, then, a still small voice which is the room sich which in German sich means victory. You see? The meaning of the rune sikh is victory. You want to be victorious? Then you have to understand how the wind relates to your head. Because it's through the nose how it enters. And how we talk about the keys of the kingdom of heaven related with your nostrils, with Ida and Pingala. How the matter, which is related with the mountains, the rocks, 
that when mingled with the blood, create the rocks. When you find the rocks are the elements in Yesod, that comes from your blood. It creates a movement of forces in your sexual force. Especially when you are in the sexual act. When the couples are in the sexual act, the move, the movement, which is the earthquake, in the sexual act, rises the fire, the sexual fire. But remember that it's written there. Yod Chava, or Yod Hei Vav Hei, the sacred name of God. Baruch Hashem is not in the wind, is not in the earthquake, is not in the fire. Do you observe the three brains there? But is in the still small voice, which is the fire that awakes in your coccyx, in your chakra muladhara, your divine mother. There, in that kundalini, is where yod he bab he yod chava is hidden. That emits a sound when awakes, like the serpents. That's a still small voice. And that's why it's written that that still small voice said, What dost thou hear, Eliyahu? If you read that just literally, you will understand what we're talking about here. Eliyahu, El is God. Iao are the three primary forces. Related to the tetragrammaton. Remember that Yod, He, Vav, He are four letters. But the second one is repeated. So therefore, we don't say Yod, He, Vav, He, but we said Yod, He, Vav. And that in Hebrew is Iao, Iao. That's the God Iao. Or we would say also Elijah. Elijah. Eli, my God, my God, Jah. So that's the meaning of this name, Elijah. My God is Jah. In other words, my God is Iao. That God that descended as wind, an earthquake and fire, wind in my head, earthquake in my heart, and fire in my sex. But then I transmute it. According to the Fulas Nitanian principle, and liberate the still small voice. And that's why, within, inside that voice, says, What dost thou hear? God, Iao, when that fire awakes within you, when that still small voice, which is the word in your spinal column, what is that force doing there? in your spinal column is awakening in order to create in order to make of you a prophet and this is why you in meditation when you meditate and you work with a room sikh and you feel that fire of yod chava or yod he bab he within you then you said what are you doing here, Iao, in my body? Come and help me. That is still small voice that you hear in your brain. That comes from the wind, the movement, the noise. And that's precisely the mystery of Elias going inside into the mount in order to receive help. And of course, according to the runes, that lightning can come from above. Remember that Jupiter is related with Chesed, with Zahariel, Zahariel, the God of justice. 
which is called Zahariel Etzachel Melech, the king of justice. Zahiel, the God, the king of justice. That means in Hebrew, Etzachel Melech. That Zahariel Etzachel Melech, Jupiter, has his own particularity within you. It's your innermost. Chesed, Jupiter. And in order to receive the strength from that, the Master Samaelon Veor gave a practice in the sign of Sagittarius. In order to receive the forces of the planet Jupiter from Zahariel into your innermost. And that's why he also plays the same mantra, Isis, there. He says, squat like the Peruvian guacas. Place your hands on your legs with your index fingers pointing upwards towards heaven. To, towards Uranus, in other words, to the rune Ur again. Hmm? To attract the rays of Jupiter exactly as Master Wiracocha teaches. In order to intensely magnetize the thighs. The mantra is Isis, which is vocalized like this. Isis. Remember that the I is pronounced like a double E, like in tree. Prolonging a syllabant sound with the S like that of the wind. Remember that that is the S, the still small voice that Eliyahu, Eliyahu heard in the month. With that mantra, you can also transmute your sexual energy. Because the still small voice, the S of Sikh, victory, hides Eliyahu. Iyao, the god Iyao. In other words, the mantra Iao, which is El, God, is synthesized in the sound of the still small voice. So when you are in a sexual act and you feel, you breathe first, you feel the wind. Remember, Jehovah is not in the wind. You feel the commotion of the blood in your body. Remember, Jehovah is not in the earthquake, in the movement. Then you feel the fire in your sex. Remember, Jehovah is not in the fire. But when you feel that fire, remember that temptation is fire. And the triumph, victory, sikh, sigel, over temptation, is light. And then you said, and imagine that that fire is transforming to light. And that light rises in your spinal column. And that light is Yod Chava. That light is Iao, Eliao. What are you doing here, Iao? You are fecundating my consciousness. You are fecundating my spirit. Hmm? So you can practice that, of course, as a single. In that uh, squat position, pronouncing the S with the I. Remember that the I is your innermost, the Ruach Elohim that floats over the waters, your sexual waters. And is the light that comes from that water. With this clue, you will totally awaken clairvoyance and will obtain the power to read the Akashic records of nature in which you will find this wisdom that we are talking about. And then you will understand that it is a wisdom that doesn't belong to anybody, but that many masters talk about. Because they were allowed to enter, or they were capable to enter into the Akashic records. After that, we must meditate intensely on the inner being, begging him to bring to us the angel Sahariel in order to help us. 
Zahariel, as I said, is the Logos of Jupiter, the king of justice. Zahiel Melech in Hebrew. That's why in the conjugation you, you, you name Zahariel et Zahiel Melech. Means the God of justice, the king of justice. This is how a translation means. Oh, we will give now, or we will open for questions. Before that, let me show you uh, the last practice that you can do with a run sikh. Every time that you finish any work, sexual magic, meditation, any type of work that you do, or when you write the letter, at the end of your written letter, what do you do? You just sign your signature, right? So any magical work has to finish with this, the rune sikh. You must seal all of your magical works, invocations, supplications, healing chains, etc., with the rune sikh. With your index, you form the rune sikh and pronounce the yes. That's the rune. Like the line, form the rune, and that finish of you are sealing like this. This is done. Now we have to go and do something else, different, of course, not magical, not esoteric. Remember the S as a prolonged, sweet, and affable whistle or still small voice. That's the secret of the rune sikh. Questions? Yeah? Is there any relation between the subtle egoic thought brought into the absolute, thereby infecting it and the bread of shame discussed in the Zohar, Yehuda Ashla commentary? Again the lecture? I mean, again the question? Is there any relation between the subtle egoic thought brought into the absolute, thereby infecting it and the bread of shame discussed in the Zohar? The breath of shame. Bread of shame the breath of shame. Bread. bread. Oh, the bread. Certainly, I didn't meditate in that, but it could be related. Because uh, the infection, of course, of the Theomer Malogos happened unintentionally. Okay. It was not uh, done on purpose. Because it was unforeseen. That's why I said, bef uh, after this uh, tragedy that occurs at that time, the planet Purgatory was created by our own Elohim in order to place there any individual that already crystallized the three primary forces and developed that in order to enter into his bosom. That's why the Purgatory is a, a, a type of purge. But only, I repeat, for initiates. It's not like religion in this day and age states that any soul can enter into the purgatory after death. After psychological death, yes. But physical death, nah. We're going to limbo. For only those, it is the purgatory is only for initiates. I have a, 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 that height. Of course, uh, remember that bread. Is that super substantial force that we receive from the height? It's the mana. Obviously, when that happened, when that tragedy happens in the past, everything was altered. And even the internal bodies that we were creating or that people were creating at that time were altered. And that's why the law of the Trogo Auto Egocrat was changed. From the auto egocrat became trogo auto egocrat in order to sustain that, and that's the big the biggest change. You remember, for instance, in Greek mythology, the god Saturn, Kronos, swallowing his own children. That is precisely the same mystery. Swallowing the host children, meaning the gods, the Elohim, were infected. You understand that? The Elohim were infected 
because the residues of the sins of the soul that other individuals were bringing unintentionally. So Kronos, time, Eropas, was following that. A kind of rebellion, but unconsciously. Within the Saturnian epoch. Remember that Saturn is the seventh. If you count the seven cosmoses from the very bottom to the top, the seventh is a protocosmos. So Saturn entered there. It shouldn't be there. I mean, that time. What, what does trogo mean? Trogo. Trogo means to swallow. Trogo. In Spanish, we say tragar. To swallow. It means that after we do something, we swallow it. So the protocosmos, the Theomermalogos, create the universe and swallows the substance of it in order to sustain its own life, its own existence, in other words. Yes? How we yes. But then in, order, in order to take advantage of the fullest need and the end principle, we have to resurrect. And then we receive uh, the elixir of longevity, which is a thousand years at least. And we can prolong every thousand years more the fullest need and the end principle. Okay, that's what I was going to ask. You see? Because that's just another arrow pass. Yeah. So that would imply that resurrected masters also die. Normally, when a resurrected master resurrects, when the master resurrects, he receives a thousand years within the full as nita and the end principle. But after that, he will ask, you see, if we have, for instance, an Kumara has millions of years. And of course, he has the power of that because they are submitted to other heropasses or flow of times that belongs to the absolute. But for us, for instance, in order to acquire or to take forces of the Fulas Nitanian principle, even though we are in the Toklanos, we perform different rooms, different exercises, and we pray to those principles of the Fulas Nitanian that sustains life in, at that amount of time, which are Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And that's why when you are doing the exercises or the runic exercises or any type of esoteric exercise, you have to pray to the innermost and beyond Bina, the Holy Spirit, which is the source of life. Right? If you don't pray to your Holy Spirit, how are you going to prolong your life? He's the source of the fullest need and the end principle. And that's why we always insist when we are teaching the uh, exercises for rejuvenation to concentrate on the Divine Mother, who is a feminine aspect of the Holy Spirit. The rune Ur, the rune Is, the rune Sikh. This is all the whole mystery. And in that way, we receive, uh, uh, because of mercy, assistance from the full Asnitanian principle in order to increase our Itoklanos for a while. But if we don't do any exercise, we just belong to the Itoklanos, and sooner or later, our Bobby Cardinals will finish, which are placed in the three brains. That's why the Master says, we died on thirds. People that abuse the Bobby Cardinals of the intellect, the intellectual brain, they die and they sometimes are crazy. They don't have energy there in order to think, in order to analyze. One initiate, for instance, as an example, that abuse of the intellectual brain or that use the Bobby Cardenas of his intellectual brain too much was Nietzsche. He knew the science, but he wrote too much. He dedicated himself to write too many philosophical books. And therefore he uh, exhausted the Bobby Cardenas of his intellectual brain. And at the end he was nuts. In initiate, you see. So it doesn't mean because you are in this path 
you are not uh, in the danger of becoming nuts. You have to rest, you have to know how to save and how to use your three brains. If you abuse of your emotional brain, you can become schizophrenic and many sicknesses of the heart. People that abuse of the motor brain, they end par uh, paralyzed. So we always die on thirds. Those people that are intelligent, they utilize the three brains very wisely. When they die, they die physically, emotionally, and emotionally at the moment of their death. But many of us, before going to the physical death, which is related with the motor's brain, we are already dead emotionally. You see many people that are already emotionally dead. Others that are already, how you call that uh, sickness, that they don't uh, use their brain very well, dementia. Or also that they don't remember very well, Alzheimer's, right? Because they are dead intellectually. So let us utilize central forces, central practices in order to save. Because remember, itoklanos is that principle that eventually will finish. They will leave us another body, of course, if we deserve it. With our other quantity of bobbing caldenauts. Let us die physically with our three brains in balance. Not unbalanced, because then we are really... Do you have another question? Yes? The tragedy that occurred, that was in the Ain Sof, correct? In the Ain Sof Or. Yeah. In the Solar Absolute. Hmm? And that's why, you know, the Mahamamatara emerges from the Ain Sof. So that's a cause and effect. According with that tragedy in the Solar Absolute, then the laws changed, the, th the law of three and the law of seven, from the 12th Ian. But still, we receive help. Our goal is to develop objective reasoning among the six degrees that we already know. At least to acquire the first degree, because the highest is the Unclad, which Master Jesus of Nazareth attained. Thank you very much. To learn more about what you learned in this lecture, we invite you to explore the books published by Gloria and Publishing available from booksellers worldwide. You may also be interested in online courses or upcoming retreats, all of which you can learn about at GnosticTeachings.org. All of this has been made possible by the financial support of listeners like you. Will you help others to benefit from this knowledge? Most spiritual schools recommend a donation of $10 to $20 per lecture. Every donation helps. Make a donation now at GnosticTeachings.org. Thank you. May all beings be happy. Yeah.